V is a tool from the creators of Vue that greatly improves our front-end development experience. Its name comes from the French word for fast. Let's look at why. Vue can start your development server in under 300 milliseconds, perform hot module replacement, which are updates you can make to your code at runtime, in under 100. This speed in comparison to tools like Webpack comes from the way that Vue handles modules. In Webpack, your entire application has to be bundled before your development server is ready. In Vue, however, your server is always available. Then when a request is made to your site, let's say someone wants to view a page, only the modules needed to render that page are parsed and resolved by the browser. This approach gives Vue a performance advantage over tools like the Vue CLI. To create our first Vue project, let's open up a terminal and then type the command npm init at vite.js slash app. You can also do this in Yarn using Yarn Create. We're prompted for a name, so let's call our project MyVite Project. Next, we're asked for a template. As you can see here, even though Vite is optimized specifically for Vue, you can use other front-end frameworks like React, and the performance and benefits of Vite will still work. However, for this tutorial, we will be selecting the Vue template. After we hit enter and create our project, the command line prints out three commands. So let's run them. Let's cd into our project, run npm install, and then run npm run dev. Our dev server starts up very quickly and prints out a localhost URL for our app. So if we head over to localhost 3000 in our browser, we'll see our very first Vite app running. This starter template contains a link to the documentation for both Vite and Vue 3. And if we click this button, the count will increment. So let's take a look at some of this code and understand what's happening. Starting from the beginning, our Vue app is created inside of main.js. It only has three lines. The first imports the create app method from Vue's core library. The second line imports our app.view component. And the third line creates our Vue instance using create app and app.view and mounts it inside of a div that has an ID of app. We can actually find this div inside of our index.html file. So let's take a look at app.view next. If you're new to Vue, this may look a little overwhelming, but don't worry. Vue gives us the ability to use what are called single file components. And as you may guess, this means that our entire component, template, script, and styles are contained in just one file. So inside the single .vue file, there are three separate sections. First, the template section contains HTML-based code that determines what is actually rendered to the screen. Next, the script section contains our JavaScript logic. We can import modules, other components, and handle the data and reactivity for our component. Finally, the style section contains the CSS styles for our component. App.view shows us a few other things about Vue 3. It shows us how to reference assets, in this case the Vue logo, from our source folder using relative paths. Since this component is app.view, the relative path to the image is an assets slash logo.png. And it also shows us how to import and render additional Vue components. Inside of our script section, we import hello world from the components folder. Then inside of our template, we can render it right here. But what is this message attribute on our component? First, let's see what happens when we change the value of this message attribute to V project tutorial. As soon as we save, hot module replacement allows our browser to automatically update. So we can see that the title under our logo changes to our new text. To understand what's doing this, we have to take a look at our hello world.view component. So, so far, we have our index.js file that creates our view app using our app.view component. App.view includes hello world as one of its child components, and this message attribute is being passed from app to hello world. In view, we call these custom attributes props, and they're used to send data from a parent component to its children. Inside the script section of hello world, we can see that we import something called define props. This allows us to define and even validate props for our component. In hello world, we are passing in a prop called message and saying that it must be a string. Once we have a prop defined, we can reference it inside of our template section. In view, we can bind data to our template using the mustache syntax, which means surrounding our expressions with double curly braces. Here, the mustache tag will be replaced with whatever the value of message is. That's why when we change message, the title changed on our web page. And the last thing I want to look at is how this button is able to track a count variable and handle click events. And this has to do with the reactive data, which in view 3 works a lot differently than the options API in view 2. Reactivity is a core concept in view. In its most basic form, reactivity means that when the data data in our JavaScript model updates, our DOM will automatically reflect these changes. In Hello World, the count variable is a great example of reactivity. Clicking the button will increment our state. Then when our state updates, our application will automatically re-render with a new value. There are two ways to create reactive data inside of Vue, reactive and ref. Hello World uses reactive, but later in this video we'll cover ref too. Reactive allows us to create an entire reactive object that can detect when any of its properties change. Inside the script section, state is being set as a reactive object with a count property. Then when our button is clicked, which is detected by this at click, we can increment our count property. So now that we understand how the basics of view work inside of our v starter code, let's try writing our own component. For our component, let's build a simple form with a name text field and a submit button. To start off, let's create a new file inside of our components folder and we'll call it myform.view. We'll create our three separate sections one for our template, one for our script, and one for our styles. Let's start off with the template. First, we want to create a wrapper div that will contain all our elements. Inside, we'll create an input element of type text with a placeholder of name. Finally, we'll create another div for our submit section, and inside, 
we'll place a button that says submit. To actually render our form on our view app, let's head over to app.view, and where we imported hello world, we can change the values to say my form. So in the script section, let's change this import, and then in the template, let's replace this line and just say my form. So now if we look at the browser, it doesn't look the prettiest, but everything's here. Let's add a few styles to myform.view to make it look just a little bit better. And to keep it simple, all we're gonna do is add some padding to our input and some margin to the top of our button. Now we can take a look at adding reactive data to our form. In Hello World, we saw that script was declared as script setup. And that's actually shorthand for what we're gonna be doing in this component. So first, let's create our export default, and then inside, we'll place a setup method. And this method runs when our setup is created. And then, to create our reactive data, let's import ref from view. So back inside setup, let's create a const name, and we'll set it to a ref with a starting value of an empty string. Similar to reactive, ref creates reactive data, but instead of an object, we can just pass a singular value. To make our data available in our template, it has to be returned by our setup method. So at the end of setup, let's return an object that contains name. Back inside our template, let's print out name and then set up a vModel on our input. vModel creates a two-way data binding. This means that whenever our input changes, name will change. And if name changes somewhere else in our application, our input will also change. We can see this in action when we type inside of our input. As we type, the value of name changes, and that's the power of reactivity in view. Okay, let's work on submitting this form. When our submit button is clicked, we want to call a method called submit form. We can capture this click by using v on colon click, and then calling submit form. However, for shorthand, it's most common that you'll see v on just replaced with an at symbol. Now we actually have to create the submit form method. So inside our script and our setup method, let's create a constant submit form and set it equal to a function. Inside, we'll just print out that the form is submitted and the value of name. And since name is a ref, we have to call dot value in order to access the actual string value. Don't forget that since we want our template to have access to submit form, it has to be returned from our setup method. So now, when we click our button, we can see our console printing our log statement. Of course, in real apps, this would be connected to a database, but in terms of view, we have a lot of the functionality that we're looking for here. So one quick feature we can add is to disable our submit button when there isn't a name. And we can do this using vbind and HTML's disabled attribute for buttons. vbind allows us to bind an HTML property to a JavaScript expression. So inside our button tag, let's type vbind colon disabled equals name.length equals equals zero. And this means that whenever the length of our name is equal to zero, our button can be clicked. And once again, a shorthand for vbind is simply to type colon. So for this, it would just be colon disabled. In our app, we'll see that if our input is empty, our button is disabled and we cannot submit our form. However, as soon as we type something, we can click it again. The final concept we're gonna look at in this video is lifecycle hooks. Each view component has a lifecycle that includes creation, mounting to the DOM, updating data, and unmounting from the DOM. View provides us hooks into these events so we can run code at certain times in a component's lifecycle. Our form, we're going to use the mounted lifecycle to automatically focus our text input. And mounted is called after our component's template has been added to the DOM. The first thing we have to do is import unmounted from view. And then inside setup, let's call onmounted and pass it a method that will run when the component is mounted. So now, we want to take our input and focus it. But the problem is, how do we access our input element? Well, we can do this using template refs. And template refs allow our script section of our view component to have access to the template elements. So inside setup, let's create a constant L that's equal to a blank ref and don't forget to return it. Then inside template, we'll go to our input element and add ref equals L. So when our component is mounted, view will automatically set the value of L to this element. To check this, let's create two log statements that print out the value of L, one outside of on mounted and one inside. So when we look at our app, we'll see that before our component is mounted, L is undefined. Then after it's mounted in our lifecycle hook, it's properly connected to the input element. Now that we have access to our element, all that we have to do in onMounted is call l.value, which will give us the elements stored by our ref, and then call .focus to focus our input. When we reload our page, our input is automatically focused when our page is loaded. We can start typing without having to click our input or anything. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. Hopefully this quick introduction into Vite and the basic concepts of Vue 3 taught you a little bit. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe and consider checking out learnview.co for more free tutorials and Vue development resources. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Vue tutorial.